cool. Uh, before I said I would do this talk, I had never touched Unreal. Um, so this is my journey of um, trying to figure this out. And it's almost a case of some of the things not what to do and then go start where I should have started. Um, but yeah, let's get going. Uh, you've probably seen a lot of marketing and chatter talking about the convergence of um, spatial and gaming engines. Um, it's pretty popular and you too can do that in the free and open source world. It's exciting. Um, so a little bit of background as to why I'm interested in this quickly. Uh, Woods, we're running open source, usual suspects, PostGIS, QGIS, GeoServer. Uh, we built our enterprise web GIS on CarrierJS, which is um, the same platform that IIC was using to deliver the new A project. So that's uh, cool to see that getting out there. Um, go check it out, CarrierJS. It's made out of Australia from their Data61 group. Uh, but moving on. At, um, yeah, so that's got 2D and 3D. The 3D part is in Cesium. Uh, at Woods, we capture a lot of 3D content. We're doing uh, as built terrain models, design terrain models as part of our land development, uh, terrestrial and mobile laser scanning, and scan to BIM. So we have a lot of 3D content, and we've been watching the progression of Unreal and Cesium and thinking, hey, we should play with that. And I did. Uh, the key part of that was all cesium. Uh, cesium's been around for a little while now. Um, it keeps, keeps progressing. Um, browsers are getting more powerful. They get access to your uh, GPUs. And it's, um, yeah, really impressive. Cesium itself has become more sustainable. It's become its own company with VC backing. And um, they've created a commercial component called Cesium Ion. That's a, a data processing and serving platform. Um, and yeah, this Cesium for Unreal has only been around for about a year and a half, I think. Um, and yeah, some of the interesting stuff. It's um, Apache 2.0. You can pretty much do whatever you want with it. The code's all there for both the web GIS and the Unreal side. It's all up on GitHub. Um, and yeah, the commercial side of that is cesium iron, as I spoke to. And there's heaps of content. Um, sometimes you think open source projects, you're sort of left floundering. But um, no, there's a lot, lot out there, so it's really accessible. Um, um, let's have a quick look at what you'd see if you try and step into this. So I will say, um, if you have any interest in playing with Cesium and Unreal, just go and download it now, rather than when the inspiration hits you. It's 114 gigabytes of download and install. <laughs> so um, yeah, you can't feel inspired and just get cracking. Um, and then once it's in, you'll have to go into the, I don't have a screenshot of that for some reason, but you go into the marketplace and you search Cesium and you'll find the plugins and extensions that you have to download, and a sample app, which um, I decided I wouldn't start with the sample app. Um, I decided I'd start with building in, well, I decided I'd follow their Cesium Engine 4 tutorial, but in Cesium Engine 5. It uh, didn't go so well. Um, you start off with a, a blank page, and then you go in and install the Cesium plugin into your project. You will then find the Cesium components for that uh, over here. That brings up this toolbar up the side there. Uh, and when that loads, you've got this default sort of Cesium game engine terrain in white. And you can see the, uh, the real world terrain just peeking through there. Um, so that was the first like, huh, how's this meant to play? Uh, found out you could turn that off little uh, little eye icons over here, and that would make that go away. And then my world looked like this. You couldn't seem to uh, see very far into it. And that was another uh, component, which was uh, some sort of distance decay fog type component. Uh, I found you could turn that off, and I'm like, oh, this is all looking good. You can see the world again now. And then I went to sort of play the game, and all of a sudden my landscape, which I thought I'd hidden, was, was here again. 
that was this little preview here. I'm like, ah. So my next step for that was to post a question to the uh, CZM for Unreal forum where it languished with no help. So I, uh, I, having left that for a couple of days, I decided I should better come back with a slightly better answer for my talk. Uh, and then I decided, hey, let's open the sample project, um, which I'm just going to jump across into now really quickly. Find that mouse and pull that across here. So this is what you're going to see uh, when you open up the sample map one. Well, it wasn't quite like this. Um, I think I added a cesium ion token, which gives you the Bing imagery and a global terrain base map. And that's sort of where the commercial crossover happens. Um, if you're using cesium ion, cesium ion commercially, you need to have a license for that and uh, pay for their sort of monthly platform subscription. Uh, to, and you pay by volume of content, uh, but you can also host pretty much all of that content yourself. Uh, cool. And uh, it's, it can feel quite uh, analogous, similar, uh, to what you're used to with a desktop GIS. You kind of have like a table of content over here. Um, over here, you can sort of add blank tile sets. So I've added this tile set here, which was a um, reality mesh model captured in uh, Capturing Reality, which is also owned by Unreal now. Um, this model is, um, is really quite detailed, but the default texturing isn't great. Um, I'll, I'll try and get into game mode quickly, but um, it doesn't like how many textures there are. You have to bring that into Blender and make it prettier. Um, over here, you've got terrain. Part of the terrain buried down here is the actual raster overlay. Uh, if you wanted to switch that up with, say, the lens imagery, so you're sort of stepping away from that ion licensing, you have to go into a blueprint, which is kind of like a visual programming world. And let's just start the game mode up quickly. Uh, where's that gone? Oh, that's ended up on my other screen. Let's see if I can get that back over here. And I will just do a quick fly around for the last 20 seconds. Uh, you can see the, uh, the textures are all, all in there, but it's really sort of stuttering and struggling. Uh, let's just fly out a little bit more. And I'm going to see if I can hit Carlton Gore Road on the way in, which we've got a model that we did the laser scanning for. This got processed out of FME into the CZN 3D tile. Is this Carlton Gore? Uh, I've got lost. <laughs> oh no, there it is, right there. There we go, so that's just a quick shell which is in there. And then if we jump back up over here, I'm gonna hit the Harbour Bridge which is a bit easier. So here we've got Harbour Bridge and it's bright yellowness. And also a great artifact of this global cesium uh, terrain. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's that. Yeah. <laughs>